Welcome to The Know, I'm Ashley Jenkins. It's good to be back. And if you're holding on to hope that you'll end up with one of those hard to find NES classics, you might want to start checking those eBay listings, at least if you live outside of the Americas. According to one major Nordic retailer, Nintendo has sent word that it will be ceasing production for the NES Classic and they won't be receiving any more supply because, you know, there was no market for it and nobody wanted one. This report was seemingly confirmed over at NeoGAF, where one poster who claims to be an employee offered the same information. Many retailers are now informing customers they won't be able to fulfill pre-orders, killing the NES Mini, a console that's been a surprise hit for Nintendo would be a totally Nintendo move, let's be honest. But does that mean that it's being killed everywhere? No, not necessarily. Last month, Nintendo of America boss Reggie fils made an interesting comment in an interview with Wired saying, the good news, at least for consumers in the Americas, is we're going to continue to make the NES Classic available. So screw you everybody else. It sounds like America wants video games again. We gotta win something right now. Just give this one to us. One of the godfathers of the Grand Theft Auto series and former Rockstar North President Leslie Benzies has been making headlines recently with the announcement of his new project, Everywhere, a huge open world online game where you can do just about anything. And now Project Everywhere is getting even bigger. Benzies has just announced the formation of a third studio that will be contributing to the game, with this one located in Budapest. In charge of this new studio will be Christopher Warthol, who used to head up the now closed Crytek Hungary. The other two studios working on Everywhere are located in LA and Edinburgh. Considering it already has other former GTA leads, plus all these studios now contributing to the game, certainly looks like Everywhere is going to be massive, which is appropriate. And it might even be aiming to take on Bezzy's former franchise, which would be kind of cool to see, honestly. We need a battle of the titans, right? Nintendo's been dealing with tons of complaints that Switch is going to be the same as the Wii U in terms of third-party support, which is to say it's not gonna have any. But now Nintendo is saying we still haven't seen everything. In a new interview with Telegraph about the upcoming launch of the Switch, Yoshiaki Koizumi, the Deputy General Manager of Entertainment Planning and Development, also for a long-winded title, said, with Nintendo Switch, we've also put a lot of energy into making third-party cooperation possible and that includes a lot of attention paid to the development environment that we are provided to these partners, as well as the middleware we create for them. Soon you will see a lot more announcements from third-party partners. Now it makes sense that Nintendo would focus on third-party right out of the gate for a new system, but hopefully they understand that people are kind of nervous about third-party support and hopefully we'll get those announcements sooner rather than later. Now, one of the cooler features of the upcoming Switch is the fact that up to eight Switch consoles can be connected at the same time for multiplayer action, but apparently that number can go even higher. Nintendo has just announced that this summer's Splatoon, or Splatoon 2, will feature support for not eight, but 10 Switches connected all at the same time. The extra two Switches won't be players, however, they'll be spectators. Now, this is an ideal solution for tournaments, and it could mean that Nintendo is taking aim at eSports. They did sort of hint at that a little bit with the initial Switch reveal. Now, with two spectators, you can have coverage of each team in an official tournament setting, and so all we have to do is make nine more friends. Two to watch, seven to play. Yes? Yes. Now, obscure butthole simulator near Automata, kidding, we know that butthole is fake, guys, uh, right? Yeah, is coming out in less than a month on PC and PS4. Or is it? PC fans have been getting a little bit antsy lately due to publisher Square Enix's silence about its PC version. The game's newest trailer doesn't actually include any word of the PC version of the game, and the game's official website doesn't have a listing for it either. The only place you can still find it is in pre-orders for the North American Square Enix store. Kind of weird, right? A few months back, Square Enix had some back and forth with itself about whether or not we would get a simultaneous PC release. First they said it would, then they updated later and said no, it wouldn't, and then at this point, the big worry is that the PC version's kind of been quietly canceled, but it's likely that we're looking at a timed release instead. Still they should probably update PC gamers about that. Game's coming up, right? Now, if you didn't know it already, 
if you missed the demo maybe, Overwatch is really, really popular. The game has become the fastest Blizzard franchise to hit 25 million players worldwide, according to Activision Blizzard. It also now holds the company a record for strongest launch year in terms of financial performance, beating the previous record set by who else but Diablo 3 in 2012. Meanwhile, the buzz about Doomfist continues to build with players continuing to find hints of the new character on the game's latest update. There's apparently evidence of Doomfist's gauntlet as well as his theme music. Now, what's more, the Hero Gallery UI has changed as if possibly making a space for another hero card. A sign of things to come? Yeah, probably. We'll just have to wait and see exactly when it comes though. Warner Brothers has offered the job of directing The Batman to Matt Reeves, who just finished directing War for the Planet of the Apes, according to Deadline. Reeves first landed on everyone's radar after he directed Cloverfield and then followed that with the vampire story, Let the Right One In. The Batman job became open after Ben Affleck, who will still star in the movie and who co-wrote it with Jeff Johns, said he wasn't interested in directing. Previously, Tim Burton has directed two Batman movies, which were good. Joel Schumacher has done two, which kind of sucked. And Christopher Nolan did the most recent trilogy, which was awesome. It's a lot to live up to. Marvel has given us a look behind the scenes of Avengers Infinity War, featuring interviews with some of the cast and crew. The trailer gives us just a little tiny bit of backstory of the Infinity Stones and then shows off Robert Downey Jr., who of course plays Iron Man, Tom Holland, who's the new Spider-Man, and Chris Pratt, who plays Star-Lord, talking about the new film. We also get just a tiny bit more about the movie's plot. Kevin Feige, the president of Marvel Studios, said our heroes will collectively face Thanos and that it will be the culmination of the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe as started in May of 2008 with Iron Man 1. Uh, yeah, duh. Uh, Infinity War will hit theaters on May 4th, 2018, so, well, still got a while to wait on that one. Uh, David Bowie, RIP, never won a Grammy Award for his music when he was alive, but on Sunday night, his final album won every category it was nominated in. Black Star won for Best Alternative Music Album, Best Rock Performance, Best Engineered Album Non-Classical, Best Rock Song, and Best Recording Package. Now, maybe this was the Grammys finally trying to make things right after years of neglecting a classic artist, but you know, still better late than never. Black Star was released just days before Bowie's death in January last year. Uh, after the Grammy wins, his son, Duncan Jones, tweeted a family picture along with the caption, so proud of you, dad, would hold you up forever. Oh, so just now I'm all heart warmed. Uh, the developer of Yandere Simulator finally got a response from Twitch more than a year after his game was banned from the streaming service. In an email to the developer, Twitch said that it banned the game for a number of reasons, including two gameplay modes depicting nude characters and a mechanic where the character takes panty shots to use as currency for favors from others. Also, apparently not cool with Twitch was the fact that the only method of eliminating rivals was to murder them, even though... It wasn't, I guess there were a lot of different ways you could get rid of rivals, like convincing them to like other people, that sort of stuff. But sure, you do your thing, Twitch. Twitch also said that the setting of the game, as well as the age of the victims, indicated that the game is about violence against and sexual harassment of underage characters in a school setting. Yandere's developer disputed some of those characterizations and said he could make tweaks to fix others. Prohibiting a game because of its setting or the identity of its victims is close to banning it because you personally find it distasteful rather than because it violates a rule, he said. He also brought up games like Witcher 3 and Conan Exiles, which both depict sex and nudity, yet are still allowed on Twitch. The streaming service said it would review Yandere Simulator again after its development is complete. The game's developer says that it is still about two years away, so in the meantime, looks like the game's Twitch ban will remain in place. Uh, that's all the news we have for you to start the week off. What do you think of the stories? Let us know in the comments down below, and to make sure you get all the news from every corner of the internet, like this video and subscribe to The Know. I don't even need to do something clever for this end card because I screwed up a lot. <laughs> All right, we are recording. Yay! I'm back! <laughs> I'm ready when you are. Okay, let's find out if I can still <laughs> read. We're gonna do it all in one go? Yeah, no okay. problem.